Hi guys, just to let you know what's coming up, I've made separate reviews of three different uh, digital watches. Two of them are shown here. The takeaway from the videos you're about to see is that um, when it comes to heart rate, there's something more important than accuracy to some people, and that's timeliness. A digital watch, a smartwatch, should be able to produce accurate heart rate, and heart rate that matches where you are in the moment, especially for interval training. You're going to hear that horse beat quite a bit in the next three reviews. I made these separate with the intent of publishing them individually, but they're so identical that I'm just going to cram them all together here. So if this is your interest area, you got a feast. Pop some popcorn. If it's not, don't waste your time because these are not smartwatches, the kind that tether to a phone and transfer your data. They are digital watches with smart capability, in particular the way they handle heart rate. So with that said, let's begin. Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com. Today, we're going to talk about heart rate monitoring and we're going to use this little product here as an example to explain a very difficult to understand but should be simple concept of accuracy in heart rate reading. This is the Sportline Dual Use Heart Rate Monitor. I picked this one up from eBay. No, I didn't. I got it from Amazon. That's right, but they have it at eBay as well. Uh, anyway, the price is insane, $20. This is the men's version. Comes with a watch and a chest strap, and it's basing its heart rate readings on ECG as opposed to PPG, which is the pulse uh, that you get with the diode on most smartwatches. There's a ladies version similar, a little bit more, but still under $25. Darn, can't get free shipping yet. Got to add something else to it. Uh, it's called the Duo 10, 10 women's uh, dual use. And dual use means you can use just the watch and touch the, the surface to get a heart rate reading, or you can wear the strap and the watch and get a continuous heart rate reading. Now let's dive into unboxing this thing. It's in that destructive packaging stuff. So when I open it, I own it, I guess. <laughs> well, I got it anyway. Um, as I get ready to cut it, I want you to know that this thing can do heart rate zone management. Uh, you can set high, low, and average heart rate values when you've finished your workout. It's got a fat burn zone locator calorie burn tracking, digital time, of course, date, and six different alarms, and it's 50 meter water resistant, which means it's 5 ATM uh, protected. It's so hot that they've got an anti-theft store sensor, so you can't walk out with it and without beeping the thing, and they're letting you know about it. By the way, the uh, band itself is coded to the watch. So you could be in a fitness class uh, with a bunch of other folks having the same thing and yours is tied to your watch. You won't start beeping because the guy next to you is just getting too excited. Okay, let's open the container. I found a lot of times the best thing to do is to just kind of cut the edge on this and that will open up the case. All right, I'll skip ahead. There, that should do it. Lift it open. And let's take a look at this. Here it is. Press any side button for five seconds to turn it on. <laughs> when I see set tags like that, I figure somebody didn't even know how to turn the darn thing on and send it back. And enough people did that that they're giving refunds when all they needed to do was figure out how to turn it on. And so they put a big warning on there how to actually start the darn thing. Well, we're going to take the plastic cover off the front, which is a simulated display. And we'll pop out the band, too. This is a chest band that uh, has a battery already installed in here. And what I've heard and read is sometimes if these things have been sitting a long time, you may need to replace the battery. Sportline coded, coded to the watch itself. There's a uh, quick start guide that talks about getting it going, and that's it. Again, how to turn the darn thing on. 
Okay, and then we've got a full manual in here, which I'll show you. Um, introduction, how to use it, care and maintenance, and the overall watch functions. Again, this is the men's version. The ladies' uh, model is a little bit more sophisticated, it looked like. You can freeze frame this anytime you'd like to if you want to read in more detail. It's good to understand how to put the chest strap on properly. Here are the different modes you go through with the watch. Setting the watch functions and so forth. You want to set it, of course, for all of your information, male or female, and your age and all of that, so that it can calculate your zones properly. So when you're working out, you're in the, uh, the correct zone alarm uh, setting. Feel. If you have the input data incorrect, then it's not going to match up properly with you and you might be beeping either too low or too high. Wow, there's a lot of uh, stuff in here. I'm actually going to have to go through and read this carefully. Okay, and here's your range and specifications. Gives you a little bit more information about accuracy and whatnot. Again, this is a health... Uh, gym kind of a device. There's replacing the battery information on both the watch and the battery. There's no charging needed on this one. Uh, this is not a highly calibrated medical device. So you're going to be getting good uh, heart rate information, but it's not the kind of stuff that you would be wired up to hospital equipment, uh, for example. Whole thing is in English and we're good to go. Let me show you the watch. Any button for five seconds says hold. It's an LCD screen, typical Casio kind of display. And it looks like we are here. And it's come up. Now, it's just been turned on. So the date's wrong. All of the data are wrong. And I'm not going to walk you through everything having to do with that. Um, the setup would be just pretty much obvious. What I do want to do is talk about heart rate now and heart rate accuracy. I have thought a long way and a long time about how to explain this to you guys, and I think uh, thunder and lightning is probably the best way to talk about this. Lightning, when you see it, is instantaneous. It's electrical. It's moving at the speed of light. So when I touch this thing, and it goes into its automatic heart rate detection mode, it's like lightning. My heart is beating, and it only took about five seconds to give us a heart rate. And what's happening is the electrical signal, the pulse between um, the peaks of my electrical heartbeat are being picked up by this watch and figured out to give you the heart rate. And that's what we're looking at right there. Now here, here is a Galaxy Gear S3 and its heart rate measurement. This is like thunder, okay? What's happening here, there's optical diodes on the back that are looking at the blood moving through the capillaries in my arm. And depending on that pulsing, the reflected light gives you a little bright or dim, and the electronics can figure out from that what the heart rate is based on the pulse. That's like thunder. That's the sound arriving later. So how accurate are these? Gosh, can I get them both on the screen? Well, this thing keeps taking me off the screen. Here we go. Heart rate, heart rate. That one's coming in at about 71 on the right, and I'm at 73 exactly on both of them. In this static condition, the heart rate is pretty darn close within a couple of beats, taken both ways, electrically and pneumatically. Now, here's where accuracy really becomes an issue. And this is why I haven't been able to show it easily to you on these devices. I'm sitting here quietly talking to you, and this is the reading that I'm getting uh, in a sedentary situation. But Uncle Tix and Mrs. Tix are working with a trainer, and we're doing interval training. That means you work out really hard for a few seconds, and then you stop and rest. And then you do it again, and then you stop and rest. And it's important that your heart rate doesn't go above your maximum healthy heart rate when you're doing interval training. And guess what, folks? This type of a watch is spot-on accurate. 
right there, beat for beat, and as soon as I hit a peak, I'm there. This type of a watch now is totally different. This, this one has to average the heart rate over time. And so what you find on all of these very fancy, expensive ones to the tiniest little ones that use the optical PPG, see the, the green diodes there, is that the heart rate may be accurate, but it's lagging. It's going to be behind what you're going to get with the instantaneous. This is lightning. Oh my gosh, lightning struck. Then you count your seconds, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, maybe up to five seconds or so. And then this heart rate will climb up or drop down to match the instantaneous one here. So are smartwatches producing accurate heart rate? Yes, as long as what you're looking for can be averaged over time. If you're running, if you're cycling, and you're trying to stay more or less in a zone, you can rely on the heart rates from these devices. However, if you're doing some form of interval uh, testing workouts and you need really accurate instantaneous, not averaged heart rate, then you need to go to an ECG determined heart rate. And that's where these kind of watches come in. Is it smart? Yeah. Uh, is it tethered to a, a phone? No. Uh, it, it pretty much is standalone on its own. This gives you the heart rate when you make a circuit by touching it like this. Or if you put the band on your chest, this is constantly transmitting and this will always be showing you the current heart rate that you're at. So this is the best apparatus, the way, best way to go if you really want to work on, say, staying in your fat burning zone or aerobic or maybe even tapping into the edge of anaerobic. You can go in and out of that and, of course, do interval training when you're using ECG-derived heart rate. PPG-derived heart rate is appropriate for the long term, for 24-hour continuous heart rate analysis, for getting your uh, average uh, heart rate over time or your resting heart rate. That'll all work fine for that. So you may need two watches. <laughs> I'm turning you into a watch collector. I really am. Something like this, if you're going to really do spot on, need it now, need it accurate heart rate for um, interval type training at 25 bucks or less, ladies version, the Duo 1010 or the men's Duo 560. There's other models out there too. There's some that don't have the band and there's some that do all kind of fancy things. But the key is it doesn't have the diodes on the back. You have to touch the case or use a strap, chest strap to get uh, the data transferred over to the device. Um, other than that, stick with a smartwatch. That's a great way to go to get heart rate data, most of the time nowadays, these things are really accurate as long as you're okay with putting up with taking an average. All right. Well, you've been watching Smartwatch Ticks, a little bit of technical info for you. Uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. We'll see you again soon. Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at whoa, smartwatchticks.com. I'm going to throw you guys a curveball today. You know, we review just about every smartwatch um, that has heart rate monitoring in it. It gives you your pulse rate and we ask, is it accurate or not? Well, today, with the benefit of what's in this little container here, I'm going to have you asking a second question. Is it accurate? And are you ready? Is it responsive? I'll tell you why. You see, Mrs. Tix and I are now seeing an amazing fitness specialist, a coach who's helping us get our bodies in shape. There we go. Yeah, it's destructive packaging because it says you can't return it. And one of the things that he does with us is a form of interval training where you're isolating a muscle and you're like really working it and, and you're checking your heart rate when you peak to kind of rise up 
and then come back down over an interval instead of a long distance sustained thing. In order to do that, your heart rate obviously has to be quite responsive. It can't lag 5, 10, 15, 30 seconds when you're doing an interval that might be a minute, you know, stuff like that. So um, he swears by these things. This is a latest evolution of this Sportline Solo uh, smartwatch. There's no tethering to a heart, uh, to a phone uh, or anything like that. And it does basic stuff. It's going to have time and date and it's going to have heart rate. And it's got a special ability to calculate, to literally calculate calories burned based on heart rate differential and such. A stopwatch and countdown timer and it's water resistant, all of that. But look, there's no diode in the back. The magic about this one is that the heart rate monitor built into it uses a form of ECG for highly accurate, highly responsive heart rate. Let's dig into it. Well, right off the bat, we're told to hold any button. There's four of them for five seconds, and it actually says hold. It's flashing. I'm holding. We're counting. Three, two, one. There we go. Look at that. Okay, we have a digital display it's your regular old casio kind of a uh, smartwatch digital watch and it's already looking for a heart rate just because i was touching the back and the front i guess at the same time so we got to go through and set the time and do all that but first let's run through the sportline 915 solo heart rate monitor manual for you to get a feel for how this thing operates now, if you're like expecting a full-on smartwatch today um, that does Android apps and, you know, blood pressure and blood oxygen, sleep apnea measurement, cooks your breakfast and wipes um, the bathroom counter, um, you're not going to get that. This is a very simplistic digital watch with some heart rate measuring capabilities that... Um, I just wanted to highlight for you so that you have the, uh, the concept to think about when you're buying a really sophisticated smartwatch that talks about doing heart rate measurement and blood pressure and all the others, that in addition to accuracy, you may want to be questioning responsiveness. Here's why I'm saying that. When we've been working out, I, yeah, I get watches in all the time and we're going three days a week now. And so every time we go, I go with one of the brand new watches, be it a fitness watch or an Android or watch or whatever. Uh, I take one along, I wear it on one arm, and I wear um, the equivalent of this watch here for men um, that he has, that he loans out when you're doing your workout. I wear that on the other one. And then we do some interval thing for two and a half minutes on an elliptical or we're doing squats or doing something. And uh, he asked, what's your heart rate? Well, okay, I flip both watches over. And this one, it's just like right up there, 127. I look at the other one and it's at 81, 85, 89, 92, 101, 115, 120, 125, 124, 123. Follow me? It kind of gets there, but it gets there about 10 seconds to 20 seconds late because it's averaging them or doing some strange thing, but it's not giving me an instantaneous result. And sadly, that's what's happening with all of them that use the, the green diode. So I know I'm here to you know, tell you about all the incredible smartwatches out there, but I also want to inform you that you're not getting what you think you're getting because I thought when I got a blood pressure reading and a heart rate reading and a blood oxygen reading that it was now and it's not it's later <laughs> actually it's it's earlier what I'm getting is earlier so if you're just jogging and running and stuff that's okay uh, it'll just kind of average out and you kind of stay in your zone but if you're doing interval training or you are doing a specialized workout with heart issues that you're not supposed to exceed a certain rate, uh, you may really want to consider ECG heart rate reading uh, apparatus, something similar to this.
All right, let me set it up and we'll look at what it does. So obviously it's sized for a lady, but they do have men's versions of this. And the early, early ones, you had a button on the front you had to actually press to get the thing to go into the heart rate monitor mode. I'm going to tilt it a little bit so you can see the time because it is just a plain old digital watch display. Got it all set time and date. You simply touch with the opposite finger. It's going to go into the mode for monitoring the heart rate. The first big digit is the heart rate and see the little digit beside it? That's the percentage of the maximum based on the age and gender of the person who's wearing it. So you put that basic information in here as well as setting the time. And then all you got to do is touch it anywhere in this metal plate and the electrical signal going through your heart from the plate on the bottom and the plate on the top will give you your heart rate. Beyond that, you can go into uh, the setup for age and gender for that computation of maximum percentage. You've got an alarm you can set, of course. You've got a digital uh, stopwatch. You've got a countdown timer. And here, you've got a special thing that if I start this, it's counting an exercise. Now, because it's got that information in the heart rate and gender and age, and timing, it can compute while it's running in your workout, your overall calories burned. And apparently quite accurately, not quite sure the algorithm that's being used there, but um, when it's done and you finish that session and you stop it, you can read your actual caloric burned uh, numbers. And um, that's what the big digits will be right there. So all in all, it's a sweet little, um, fitness band of, of sorts whose stake to claim is accurate and timely heart rate results. So if you're looking for something you need for heart rate, I'm steering you away from relying heavily on the optical sensor, the PPG style of smart watches that tether to your phone and everything and saying take a look at something simple like this that you can wear especially if you're doing interval type workouts and the kind of things that um, require immediate knowledge of your actual heart rate um, to stay in a particular zone or peak at a particular point and then come back down okay where do you get it well uh, hopefully we'll have a link in the show notes. I got it directly from our trainer, um, but he's not in the retail business. So here is a uh, link uh, right from the manual to the sportline.com website, and they probably have a link to sources you could buy. Otherwise, check in your local store because it came in one of these big point of purchase packages. Uh, this is the Solo 915 Women's, and they have a comparable uh, version for men. And again, now you know that when you're looking to assess health features in a smartwatch that does heart rate, not only is it accurate, but is it timely? Okay. Thanks for watching, Smartwatch Sticks. Thanks for your subscription. We'll see you again soon. Whoa, what have we here? Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com. Yeah, you just finished watching the Sportline Solo 915 video I did where we talked about heart rate and how important it is to discriminate between something that proposes to be accurate in reading heart rate and one that also is timely so that the rate that you're getting matches what your heart's doing at the moment. Well, we have something new in here. That particular watch, as awesome as it was, was a standalone device that you wear on your arm. I'm just going to cut into it. I thought I could just like pull it apart, but I don't think so. What we have here is exactly the same thing. So that's why I'm going to encourage you to watch that review for all of the different functions of that watch and watch this one for the new features that are that are here like 25 different functions available, speed and distance, IntelliTrack, ECG Accurate for the heart rate with multiple heart rate zone programming, 7-day memory, fat burning zone locator and fully waterproof to 50 meters. Oh, this thing's expensive. I mean, with all of those features, who could afford $12? What? Did I say $12?
You heard me right. 12 bucks for this. That's what I paid on eBay. Amazing. Uh, oh, nice. Look at this strap. Breathable everything. Okay, it's got a little cover on it. I'm going to peel that cover off. Okay, that's just got some fake numbers and stuff on it. A couple of buttons on this side, that side, and a touch plate that's where you're going to touch to get your heart rate. But here's the really great part and the stuff that Mrs. Tix and I absolutely love because we're working with our trainer doing all kinds of stuff, including some interval testing. And when you're working out and you're doing all your stuff, the last thing you want to do is... Whoa. I'll talk about that in a minute. And the last thing you want to do is have to touch your watch and occupy your hands to see your heart rate. So this puppy comes with a programmed chest strap that you just simply wear around your body. And whoa. Okay, I'll take that off in a second there and put it all together. You put this on your on your chest and it'll transmit to your, your watch and it's going to show you your live heart rate while you're doing whatever you're doing, even driving a car, even sleeping, I presume. And uh, you got it right there. And again, the beautiful thing about ECG measurement is it's instantaneous. It's giving you the heart rate that you're actually at at the moment, not averaged over the last several seconds like the PPG kind. That's the little green diode in the back of all the other watches. So Mrs. Tick's version, 12 bucks is this one. There's the manual. I'm not going to page through it all today for you. It's called the Duo 1060, okay? And, and Mr. Tick's version, a little bit larger, a little bit bigger screen all in all, another Sportline watch with the uh, band itself, is about 20 to 25 bucks maximum. Awesome stuff. Uh, I'll have the links for both in the show notes. And I don't want to waste your time with anything more on this. Just check it out. Check out the other video and check this thing out. What, <laughs> what is this spaceship? One little blue light. light. Yeah, there's four normally. I'm in the process of charging the brand new um, Genesis watch, which has a forward-facing camera here and a front-facing camera there. And this is a booster dock that you can actually wear. I ran the whole thing down, messing around with photography, and it's got a great screen outside. You can see it's transflective. Got a whole review, several videos up on this one. But I'm in the process of charging it and timing how long it takes to pump up a charge from the dock to the watch, and how much charge will this hold? It's coming in around an hour or so. Uh, that it will pump juice into here before it's completely down, and it's holding about 60%. So you can boost it up another 60% from being flat dead, flat dead, uh, with this bank that you can actually wear. And i just show you. You pop this off of here, wrist, and it's just sitting in a compartment. Oh, I'm all wet, though. Uh, sitting in a compartment here that if I lift it up, you can see it just goes right in there. Yeah, another whole video. I know nothing to do with this one, but uh, you saw it. It snuck in on the screen. So there we go. That's happening on this one. But back to this. Um, again, you're just making body contact. And when you touch it across your heart, and it's on this side and that side, it's going to come in and read the ECG signal that's being generated by your heart. And Calculate your heart rate immediately based on that. And over here, the tiny digit says about 50%. That is the percentage of your maximum um, heart rate. So if you're working in zones and all those kind of things, you can monitor either the percentage or the actual heart rate. You've been watching Smartwatch Ticks. We appreciate your subscription and being with us and all of the different kinds of technologies that we explore here. Really great stuff. We'll see you again soon. Okay, okay, I agree. If there ever was a manual that should be put on the screen, it's for these complicated uh, fitness watch bands. So um, for those of you who aren't interested, we're done. You don't need to watch this. But if you're thinking of getting one of these, or definitely if you own one of these and have misplaced this manual, you're going to want to come through here and freeze frame on certain pages, especially on the operation of the watch because it's actually quite a doozy. Uh, it does quite a few things. Um, and you got to put in a bunch of your own data in order to get it set up to work properly with you. 
So here you go on the finger touch and on the chest band thing. Now the chest band thing I found on uh, the one I'm using, it's a little tricky to adjust. It's um, got quite a bit of stretch to it. So you need to mess around with that to make sure it fits you tight enough, but it doesn't feel like it's constraining your breathing. Got me? Oh, by the way, down there, see how to measure your stride length? If you're still watching and you're doing anything with any kind of a watch, you're going to want to, uh, that has the ability to put the stride length in to help you compute distance traveled from pedometer step count, you're going to want to get that accurate stride uh, number. And it's different, obviously, when you're uh, walking, when you're jogging, or when you're running. So that little bit of information there is a start for understanding stride length. All right, then we finally get to the operation of the watch, and it uh, cycles through a bunch of stuff. You have four buttons. I guarantee you the upper left one is going to be the backlight, and that's all it is. So you can kind of say you really only have three buttons. But the lower left one, the mode switch, does a whole lot of stuff. So you'll be using that to get around to the different functions. And then the right top and bottom one usually go forward or backward or start, stop, and reset things, all that stuff. It's typical on pretty much all of these digital watches. You notice, too, now it's talking about you have some bar graph things on the side that can show you the percentage of um, uh, your zones that you're in. Uh, so really is worthwhile on this one to understand all the things you're looking at on the screen. Kind of like getting in a fancy Tesla, I imagine, and understanding that electronic dashboard and all the functions you can do there. All right, we're almost done. How you replace the battery. Also, you know, um, there's a battery in the chest band. So if either the watch isn't working or the chest band isn't working or both, you may want to um, check the batteries and replace them, which unfortunately, as we're doing this video, is exactly what I'm going to need to do because why haven't I showed you the watch turned on and all the functions it can do? Well, two reasons. I want to get this video up right away. Uh, and secondly, the battery's not working on it. 12 bucks, folks. eBay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of expected this. So I'm going to have to take the back of it off and probably replace the battery and the watch and maybe also replace the chest strap. Um... Being honest with you, that's what I got. That's how it came. But it's really an attractive looking little thing for a lady uh, if it's working. And as you can see, it can do all kinds of stuff. So if I get this thing going and Mrs. Tix lets me play with it again, we'll try to do a little bit more in-depth look at what happens. In the meantime, I've always got mine that we can play with as well. All right. We'll see you again soon.